As usual, all starts with CAD design. I designed oven with 100 mm thick walls, and measurements are decided by the sheet material I used. The sheets are 1500 by 3000 mm material thickness 0.75 mm. And for this oven material consumption was exactly four sheets, and I mean exactly, no leftovers. And with this, the oven ended up inside dimensions about 1250 by 1250 by 600 millimeters. I did little mistake in designing phase, where I did not consider riveting gun head size. This ended up in situations where the upper shelf carrier cannot be riveted to the wall, so I had to use some 3 millimeter bolts. The oven contains more than 500 rivets. I had the opportunity to use pneumatic riveting gun at my workplace, and I managed to rivet together outer housing and and inside of the oven, totaling about 300 rivets. And considered how fast the pneumatic gun works, it saved from hours of hand riveting. In this project, I used regular 100 mm thick rock wool, what I had lying around. In the future, if I had to do it again and improve the rigidity of the oven, then I would choose some other sheet format wool, what had more rigid structure.
Now if all the wool is packed, it is now time for some riveting. First, I place some rivets to the front face and some on sides. Then there are four rivets on both sides, what connects the inner shell and outer shell, making construction more rigid. And also this way, the outer shell also helps to support parts hanging from ceiling. Now begins the door assembly. Door is also 100 millimeters thick. The construction has two large sheets, one for each side, and then four C profiles, one for each edge. Between the door goes also the same 100 millimeters thick rock wool. The door also had a lot of riveting what you can enjoy watching now. Door riveting is the last part in assembly in this video. I mounted the heating elements and temporary controller off camera. Longer explaining video about PID controller comes separately. The oven has about 6.4 kilowatts heating power. It comes from four heating elements. Heating to 180 degrees Celsius takes about six minutes. Now begins the long waited first testing. Parts I am trying to paint are made from aluminum and cleaned with acetone. I am going to paint speaker boxes, what are meant to be installed inside BMW with 39 doors, what I designed few videos back. I am going to use pearl white paint, it is sand structured and has matte finish. Paint gun I am going to use is purchased from Eastwood. It is dual voltage version. First I tried with diffuser attached, but this did not work well because it spreaded paint too much, so I removed the diffuser and then covered parts with paint. As this is my first time using powder coating technique to paint parts, I do not have proper technique and I can't explain what I am doing, I just give my best to apply somewhat even coat. I found little shaking moves help to fluidize the powder in can and with this get more even stream of powder. Things I like about powder coating are following. First, I like how forgiving the process are, and if you really somehow mess up at some place, then you can just take compressed air and clean the part and start from beginning. 
The second really comfortable thing is, I do not have to use solvents to clean paint gun and so on, and also in won't make sticky paint dust on all the surfaces around painting. Third, I like how fast the process is from painting to final result. Curing only takes about 20 minutes and then parts are ready to use, not like wet paint where the curing takes several hours. Now, as the parts are covered with paint, it's time to load them into the oven and bake them. Each type and color of paint has little different curing parameters. For example, temperature usually must set between 180 to 230 degrees Celsius. And time is also varies from 7 minutes up to 20 minutes. Usually lower temp combined with longer time. It is important to know the curing time starts when the part's surface temperature has reached needed temperature, not when the oven door closes. Fast forward 20 minutes. And as we can see, parts are cured properly. Color seems nice and uniform. And it seems I covered all the needed surfaces. So I am very pleased with the result and hoping to use it on lot more projects. Here you can also take a look to the four heating elements installed in oven. At the end, some things needs finishing, like a uh, racks for part hanging. Also, PID controller gets finished in next video. Also, some pictures from finished parts. Here you can take look from different angles. Any comments or suggestion on powder coating topic are welcome. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up button to see similar videos in the future.